How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Rant and Chill. I'm Mr. Deadman, and we're going to talk about baby metal. Is baby metal a joke? This guy named Shred on YouTube presents that question. Uh, he did a reaction there. This guy apparently is a somebody. I don't really know who he is. Maybe I should know. I don't know. Um, here we go. I'm not going to play his whole reaction. Look at that. Look at the shades. Is that what it looks like? We wearing shades indoors? There's a reason why I wear these. You want to see? Brace yourself. Okay? You see that? That's stress. That's a lot of stress. I'm so stressed in my daily life. Okay? All right? Those, be those eyes are hideous. That's why I wear them. Okay? It's not about being cool or anything like that. I know it doesn't look cool. Anyway, let's uh, listen to what this guy has to say. And let me just tell you. Look, not everyone's going to like baby metal, and that's fine. However, uh, I also, uh, you know, you pr you put things out there. I'm going to definitely react to it. Here we go. Is baby metal a joke, or are they a real metal band? Well, is baby metal a joke? Are they a real metal band? Well, with three, three about to be four albums out there, they're definitely not a joke. They're definitely putting stuff out there with a lot of merchandise, right? With a lot, a lot of fans of over uh, two million subs on YouTube. Uh, what they have? What Metal Galaxy debuted number one, debuted number one on uh, Billboard's. Uh, like rock albums or whatever when it was when, you know, when it was uh, released, which which is surprising. It was actually so it's really nice. I'm not making that up. I'm not making that up. Bay Metals, Metal Galaxy, the Japanese metal band's third studio set debuts at number one on Billboard's top rock album chart. All right, <clears throat> so definitely not a joke. But I believe his question is, are they a joke? Are they a metal band? As in a real metal band? Now, we're going to get into some area here. Okay. And I already presented this on my channel. Like, are they a metal band in that they form the same way, let's say, like Metallica, where guys got together, dudes got together, and they, you know, played that way? No. No, they're not like that. Baby metal, the formation of baby metal is very similar to that of like a J-pop group. It is a talent agency found these girls. And they were actually going to be a subunit of another J-pop group that the Amuse was is the talent agency. And there was a little project that they're going to do with them. God, baby metal. Now, the musicians, everyone else involved, obviously... Like, they, there's a reason why they're recruiting. They're good. Okay? All right? So, and they kind of write the songs to do all, all that stuff. Okay. They, so in that way, I mean, they're playing metal and they're a group. Okay? Are they a traditional metal band? No. No, not at all. Not at all. If, if that's the question, are they a joke? Are they uh, a, a, a real metal band? They're, they're neither. They're neither. That's a stupid question. That is a dumb question. Uh, so, anyway. Well, um, I will tell you my opinion. I want to hear yours in the comments below. This is not a band I would listen to personally. And that's fair enough. That's fine. The The songs are very well written. It's As extremely crafted and manipulated by expert composers. When he says manipulated, it makes it sound as if it's a bad thing. As if the things we hear, even from popular bands like the Beatles, aren't manipulated. As if there's no manipulation going on. You think they just release crap? You think you don't think there's not a producer that tells them, no, change that. Do it this way. Do it that way. You know there is. You know there is. Wait, what, what, what are you talking about? Is Baby Metal supposed to just release crap? Is that what's going on here? Come on. There's also marketing geniuses behind this act, but it that don't be jealous. 
Sounds like you're jealous, there. That, for me, takes a bit of the magic out of things. I would rather see... Magic out of things. Every group you listen to, every, just about every group, even metal groups, that made it mainstream, it wasn't just like... It, it just didn't just happen. There was marketing involved in that. There was marketing involved in that. Now, maybe, okay, so even like an underground scene, but back in the early thrash days, there was a... There was, there was an appeal to that. They knew their demographic. They knew how to reach them. They knew who their audience was, and they gave them what they wanted. It's it's marketing. What does this guy talk about? You know, just a few guys and girls up there on stage interacting with each other more organically instead of it being such a polished presentation. You know, I hate to say it, but that's one thing. During his reaction of uh, of the live performance. He did note that the he didn't really seem to like the distance between the between Sue Metal and in the in the backing band. Okay, he he noticed that he he thought that was kind of weird. If you see it from if you see it from the perspective that you're watching like a J-pop performance or a pop performance, then it, it kind of makes more sense. Kind of makes more sense of, of what's going on there. Uh, and that's kind of what it is. I mean, you're merging two worlds, pop and metal, together. And, uh, yeah. This is sort of what metalheads are talking about when they say oh, don't sell out. Don't sell out. See, this is where the guy, like, doesn't know what he's talking about. Like, don't sell out to reference to baby metal. What is he talking about? These girls were pretty much picked at the age of, like, how how young were they, I should say? Like, wasn't Sue, like, 13 or something? Like, I'm going to be off there. It's been a while since I looked at that. So in the comment section, how old were they? But they were picked up by the talent agency at a very young age. Sell out. Dude, they they got an early break. What did they have to work for? Sell out. What? (laughs) What are you talking about? What are you talking about? They performed their asses off. They worked their rear ends to to do this stuff. It they may not write all the songs. That, that, you know, they only Sue Metal and, and Moa only have a couple credits, I think, in their name. But they you know, they 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 have to sing. They have to do the dance routine. They have to do all of that there. Okay? And they have to perform like that. And yes, when they perform live, it's live. I mean, you could even see it. Anyway. I think there's a way to increase your reach and your... The sell thing is goofy. He's wearing the Beatles... He's wearing a Beatles hat. And it looks like Rob Zombie. Two groups... That have sold out. What is he talking about? The Beatles sold out. Every popular mainstream group has sold out. Metallica got popular. They sold out. That's how they got popular. They made name for themselves in Thrash when they played that way. But to be so popular that they their, their music is in like Mission Impossible... And then uh, it could be in stadiums during, you know, football games or whatever. They sold out. They sold out. I was there when that happened. When load and reload happened. I was there. Okay. They sold out. Oh, God. Anyway. Your marketing capacity without sort of losing your soul. But I don't think this... What are you talking about? <laughs> That's what he said. The, what, he said the Beatles are pure of soul. Uh, you think you think Zach Wilde is pure of soul? The the guitarist of well, uh, Black Label Society and also uh, the guitarist of, for times Ozzy. I'm not sure if he is now. Um, I'm referencing that because the Pantera reunion tour. How can you have a Pantera reunion tour where two of the main members are dead? And you're gonna tell me you're gonna tell me that's not a 
blatant move by the record company to try to profit, to make some money, make some money off of a band with two core members, one of which said he didn't ever want to do it. That's exactly what. Mm, that's exactly what happened there. Okay. Vinny did not want to do that tour. Zach Watt had approached him before. He said he did not want to do it. Sure, the fans want it. The fans will buy it. You know who else wants it? The record company. Because they know they can make some money off it. Oh, is that not manipulation? <laughs> is that not selling out? Lose a part of your soul for it? Anyway is an effective example of that. I want to know that the vocalist and the band members really believe in what they're saying and that maybe it came from personal experiences. They can, you know, really relate to what they're saying. This comes across more as just a mass marketing manipulation. Triple M alliteration score. Oh my God, imagine that. Manipulation. What you're listening to. Did, did they... Am I listening to a band that wrote something that they may not believe in? Oh my god. They don't actually believe in their message. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. Oh. You you understand it comes a point to these very successful bands that um even in you know, like the Beatles that he the hat that he wears and other I'm sure any er, other bands he listens to that they realize that they have to write what their fans want and uh, if it's another song about how, um, well, it depends on the genre that they're in, right? But let's say, let's say it's metal. You know, talk about metal. If it's another song about anger, another song about kicking ass, then it's going to be another song about anger and kicking ass. Uh, is it going to be another song about throwing back booze, smoking weed, and kicking ass? Well, there you go. It's going to be another one of those. <laughs> Jesus, come on, man. <laughs> now, if you want to massively... Okay, now he shows us stuff. <sighs> Look, it's fine that he doesn't like it. That's fine. I think he's hung up on the mass manipulation part and that it seems very um, manufactured, which that's that's fine. That's appropriate. It is, it, it is manufactured. I mean, Baby Metal's not just releasing any any crap, okay? All right? It's manufactured, and it's polished. They know what they're releasing. Everything they do is with intent. And you know what? About what he said earlier, he wants to, he wants to know that the band actually believes in what, they, what they're singing about. Uh, what they wrote about musically. They wrote songs dedicated to the passing of a guitarist that was part of their backing band. Okay? What do you mean? But he didn't know that. He didn't know that. He didn't know that. A lot of people don't know that. So, so it's not like they aren't dedicated. It's not like they don't have any care or passion about the lyrics, the singing, uh, the songwriting. They do. Now, with that said, what do you guys say? Let me know in the comments section down below. Y'all take it easy. <laughs>